allowed us another opportunity to be able to come together to worship Him in spirit and in truth. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. John 4, 24, the Bible says, God is a spirit. That's right. And they that worship Him well, must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I'd like to thank the leadership for allowing me an opportunity to once again stand before you uh, to hopefully say something to encourage you. Amen. Because you'll be a better Christian going forward than you have been in the past. Amen. And you know, I always have a disclaimer when I get up. I want to thank y'all for coming today, my family members for showing up. Amen. And I kind of wish they had a mention to y'all that I would be speaking this morning. That way, if you weren't interested in hearing me, you could have went somewhere else. <laughs> but I'm glad you decided yeah. to come and that you're here only to worship the Lord. Yes. Yes. Brother Marbury, I appreciate that prayer, but I wish you hadn't said, you know, pray for the speaker, because I don't consider myself a preacher, and I, you know, and to qualify for a preacher, you have to spit, stomp, and sweat, and I yeah. <laughs> spit, stomp, and sweat, I consider myself a speaker, so that's what I will be doing tonight, and because of the lesson I have prepared, the Bible's going to be doing a whole lot of speaking. Yeah, this right. evening, and I'm just going to kind of just fill in the spot. All right, all right. One last thing before I get to my lesson. I was told that um, I will be, they will be filming me, all right. video recording me for the lesson tonight. Yeah. So I was told to ask y'all, don't go down in the middle. It's right. 10 in the morning, go on the side. Mm -hmm. I wish I had known I'd put on a dead better suit. <laughs> At least it looked like I knew what I was doing. <laughs> Nevertheless, we will go ahead with our lesson and hopefully we should have you out of here shortly. Again, the scripture that was read to your hearing is from Ephesians chapter 4, verses 4 through 6. And I want to reread these verses again. There is one body, one spirit, even as you are called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, and Father of all, who is above all, through all, and in you all. Yes. Now, the word one in these three verses is used seven times. Yes. And, you know, when you think about the number one, the number one is a powerful number. Yes. You know, it's the number that, when you look at sports, everybody wants to be number one. Right. They, they want to be the champion means that you're the best. Mm -hmm. There is no equal to you when you're number one. Mm -hmm. um, salespeople, they want to be the top salesman. Right. It means you're the best at what you're doing. Right. Mm -hmm. And looking at these verses, I believe Paul gives us some insight as to who God is and how God operates. Right. Yeah. Uh, when you're dealing with number one, there's no other options when you're number one. Yeah. The Bible tells us in Revelation 22 and 13, I am Alpha and Omega, the right. beginning and the end, the first and the last. Now, that Alpha has a couple meanings. Uh, one of which is that it's the first letter of the Greek alphabet. So it's the same as, as being the number one. There's also a term called the Alpha male. And it means the dominant, the one who's the leader. Yeah. It means there's no challenger to the alpha. Right. And whatever the alpha says, everyone else needs to listen and to follow. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, if we want to call God the alpha male, he would be the ultimate alpha male. Yeah. Yeah. Now, in Exodus chapter 20, verses 1, God lets us know why he is the ultimate alpha male. Mm -hmm. He says, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Now, this is just one of many scriptures where God lets somebody or lets us know uh, who he is and why he is who he is. Yeah. And then if you look at uh, uh, further down in the scripture where he talks about the first commandments or the Ten Commandments, the first commandment is that he says, Thou shalt have no gods before me. Uh -huh. yeah. And it uses the small g in the word God, right. Right. which is a true sign of an alpha leader. Uh -huh. No respect for any challenger, and there, there are the dominant ones. Mm -hmm. So just for a few minutes, 
I'd like to speak to you on the subject, the power and importance of one. All right. All right. The power and importance of one. Yeah. And I want to look at a few verses this evening, and it shouldn't take me too long to get this done because I just have one point to make. <laughs> Um, but I'm going to need to make it about three or four times. <laughs> so most of the scriptures that's going to be read tonight, uh, they're going to be quite long. So um, just asking that you bear with me. And again, I'm just going to fill in the spaces in between the scriptures. All right. So let's turn over to Exodus chapter 14, mm -hmm. verses 11 through 14. And my reader has it. Go ahead and read that. And they said unto Moses, because there were no graves in Egypt, hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore hast thou dealt us with us, to carry us forth out of Egypt? Is not this word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, Let us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians? For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians, than that we should die in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, yeah. which he will show you today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, you shall see them again no more forever. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The Lord shall fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. Amen. Amen. Now, we know the story of Moses leading the, the, the children of Israel um, out of bondage from Egypt. And if you're not familiar with the story, you can turn over to Exodus uh, chapter 13, starting with verses 17 on down through. Uh, the end of chapter 14, or you can wait till Easter Sunday and you can watch the Ten Commandments. <laughs> but the point I want to make is, when they got to the Red Sea, they were in a situation that didn't look good for them. You know, we're talking about being between a rock and a hard place. Right? They had the Red Sea in front of them, and they had Pharaoh's army coming in the back of them. And they weren't too happy with Moses. As a matter of fact, they would have rather died as slaves in Egypt than to die in the wilderness as free people. Yeah, yeah. Now drop down to uh, verse uh, 21 and 22, because God has a solution for them. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night, and make the sea dry land, and the waters were divided. And the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon the dry ground, and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. Yes. The only way for them to be saved was to cross the Red Sea where Moses had lifted his rod. There was no second option. Right? If they wanted to be saved, the only way for them to be saved was to cross at the path where the sea was over. That's right. That's right. Now that should be easy for us to understand. Mm -hmm. Red Sea open, they had to cross there. They couldn't couldn't have went no other place further up the, mm -hmm. up the sea or anywhere. Mm -hmm. This was the only place they were going to be able to cross. Now drop down to verse 26 and 28. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thy hand over the sea, that the waters may come again upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots, and upon their horsemen. And Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to his strength when the morning appeared. And the Egyptians fled against it, and the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. And the waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen and all the hosts of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them. There remained not so much as one of them. Now, Pharaoh's men tried to cross in the exact same location. <laughs> and God let the waters receive back to where they were. That's right. And he said, and all the host of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them remained not so much as one of them. Zero. Not a single one of them survived. And they took the exact same path. But the outcome was different. Yeah. Now you have to understand that you know, you can take the same path. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, you can do the same things that others do. But if your your intentions or what your your or, or or how you feel about things, um, as far as, as as not having the same mindset, mm -hmm. things not gonna be the same for you. 
as they would be for someone who's doing what they're supposed to. Yeah. Right. Now, I think about that as, as we have different churches and different religions and, and, and different aspects today. They may be traveling down the same path, mm -hmm. doing the same thing that we're doing, but they're doing something just a little bit different. Uh -huh. yeah. God is going to deal with them. Yeah. And I don't want to just limit it to uh, other congregations or, or other denominations. Yeah. You know, you could be in the Church of Christ and not quite different, right? But I'm gonna leave that alone. So let me move on to my second second example um, in Genesis chapter six. I'm gonna read verses nine through twenty-two, and this is this is the story of Noah and the flood. Go ahead and read it. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations, and Noah walked with God. And Noah begat three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make thee an ark of both wood. Room shalt thou make in the ark, and shalt pitch it within and without with pitch. Mm -hmm. And this is the fashion which thou shalt make it up. The length of the ark shall be three hundred cubits, the breadth of it fifty cubits, and the height of it thirty cubits. A window shalt thou make to the ark, and in a cubit shalt thou finish it above. And the door of the ark shalt thou set in the side thereof, with lower, second, and third stories shalt thou make it. And behold, I, even I, to bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh. Wherein is the breath of life from under heaven, and everything that is in the earth shall die. But with thee will I establish my covenant, and thou shalt come into the ark, thou and thy sons, and thy wife, and thy sons' wives with thee. And every living thing of all flesh, two of every sort, shall thou bring into the ark, mm -hmm. to keep them alive with thee. They shall be male and female of fowls after their kind, and of cattle after their kind, of every creeping thing of the earth after his kind, to every sort shall come unto thee to keep them alive. And take thou unto thee of all food that is eaten, and thou shalt gather it to thee, and it shall be for food for thee and for them. Mm. Thus did Noah, according to all that God commanded him, so did he. Amen. Once again, we got a situation. That's not going to have a good outcome for those who are not in that ark. Mm -hmm. Not only did God tell Noah to build an ark, he gave him specific instructions on the size and what the wood to use to build. And Noah went ahead and followed what God said. And verse 22 says, Noah did everything just as God commanded. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. When the rains and the floods began, there was only one way for them to be saved, and that was to be in the ark. Yeah. The ark that was built the way God wanted it done. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I'm going to take liberties with the scripture uh -oh. to make my point. Now, don't go telling nobody that this is in the Bible. Because it's not in the Bible. This is from the book of Kirk. <laughs> but just for a few minutes, let's say maybe, while, while Noah was, was building the ark, uh, somebody happened to come by, we'll call him Boa, and say Boa the Baptist. All right. Boa asked Noah what he was doing, and Noah explained to him what he was doing, and told him how it was supposed to be built. Mm -hmm. Boa didn't want to be destroyed, so he decided he was going to build an ark as well. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So he said he was going to uh, put the window on one side, because it shouldn't make a difference where the window was, so he went ahead and built his his way. Uh -huh. So then he's working on his, and let's say uh, Moa the Mormon came by and he saw what Boa was doing, and, and Moa decided, you know, that you know what, what are you doing? So he decided he was going to build build him an ark too, because he didn't want to be uh, left out and, and be destroyed. So he found that he had he found a different set of blueprints. He said, "This is an extra set of blueprints here, so I'm going to build mine based on these blueprints." So he built. Built his ark. And while he was in the midst of working on his ark, then Soa, the seven day Adventist, came along and asked what he was doing and decided that, you know, he needed to build one too. And 
He woke up the next morning and said that the Lord had spoke to him and told him to build his out of cedar wood. <laughs> so he built his, and then in the process, when he was working on his, uh, word got out to uh, Woe the Witness, and Woe the Witness said that um, y'all wasting y'all time because I know only the 44 that's going to be on this ark of me is going to be saved, so y'all might as well stop building y'all. So now from that, I'm going to let y'all know the exact day that it's going to happen. Now, that's how we ended up with all the different religions that we have today because man don't want to stay with the original message or the original messenger. And in the end, there was only one way anybody was going to be saved during those times, and that was to be on the ark. The one that God said needed to be built. And just like Moses and just like Noah, there was both had uh, some water involved. And in both cases, the bad, the corrupt, the evil person was not saved. And when we are baptized now, the change takes place. That's right. That bad, corrupt, evil sinner is washed away, and we become a new creature because we are now in Christ. Amen. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Now, let me give you one more example. And I'm going to almost be done, but we but I'm not going to quite be done, but let me give you one more example. Let's turn over to Joshua, the second chapter. Mm -hmm. And about verses 2 through 11. Now, before you start, let me give you a little insight. There was a harlot by the name of Rahab. And she had taken in two, two visitors. And there were spies sent by Joshua to go look at the lay of the land, in particular at Jericho. Right. And when the king of Jericho had heard about the spies, he told Rahab to send the spies out to him, but she told him that they weren't there anymore. They were gone. And she told him, you know, but if y'all heard, y'all can probably catch them, you know, before they get, up, get out of the city. Right. Mm -hmm. So basically, she sent them on a wild goose chase. Yes. <laughs> and then she had hit them on the roof, so she went to have a conversation with them. Yes. So let's pick up where that conversation is. Mm -hmm. And before they were laid down, she came up unto them upon the roof. And she said unto the men, I know that the Lord hath given you the land, and that your terror is fallen upon us, and that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you, mm -hmm. when he came out of Egypt, and what he did unto the two kings of the Amorites, that were on the other side, Jordan, Sihon and Og, whom he utterly destroyed. And as soon as ye had heard these things, our hearts did melt. Neither, neither did there remain any more courage in any man because of you. For the Lord your God, he is God in heaven above and in earth beneath. Amen. Now, Rahab understood who God was. Yeah. And she understood who God was based on the stories that she knew. Right. And she knew that when God was leading them, they was tearing up a whole lot of stuff. Whether they survivors, wherever they made their mark. And she knew when they came to care of them, they was in trouble. Yeah. Right. That's what you call having somebody having put the fear of God in somebody. Yeah. And the scripture said that, they, that their hearts didn't melt and neither did they remain any more courage than any man. Yeah. They was all scared. <laughs> so what she wanted to do was to make sure that her family was protected. Mm -hmm. So pretty much she made a deal with them. Look, you know, since I saved y'all, I know what's getting ready to happen. I'm going to need some help. Can y'all save me and my family? Yeah. And so they made a deal with her. They told her that we can, we, you know, we'll, we'll make sure that we take care of your family, anybody else that you care about, under one condition. Right. And drop down to 18 and 19, and let's read those verses. Behold, when we, came, or when we come into the land, thou shalt bind the sign of starting bread in the window, which thou didst let us down by. And thou shalt bring thy father and thy mother and thy brethren and all thy father's household home unto thee. And it shall be that whosoever shall go out of the doors of thy house into the street, his blood shall be upon his head, and we will be guiltless. And whosoever shall be with thee in the house, his blood shall be on our head, if any hand be upon him. So it was one house that they had to be in. Yep. Mm -hmm. 
not two or three, it's one house that they had to be in. The power of one is what I'm talking about. Now, can you imagine if one of the family members had to say, um, you know what, my house is a little bit bigger than yours. You know, I got plenty of food. Um, you know, there's, there's a whole lot of room for everybody. And, and you know, and it's sitting kind of back far, kind of hidden back here in the city, you know, so chances are they probably won't even be able to find us. I think we'll be okay if you know if we stay here. Now, if they hadn't did that, if they hadn't chose the wrong house, yeah. mm -hmm. then the lineage in Matthew chapter one of Jesus would have been missing the name. <laughs> they would have been dead. Yeah. Right. Now I've shown you a little bit about how God works. Right. You got to do what He says. You got to do it the way He tells you to do. Uh, right. Yeah. There was one way for the Israelites to go in order to be saved. Right. Yeah. There was only one ark for Noah and his family to be in if they wanted to be saved. Right. Right. And there was only one house yeah. for Rahab and her family to be in if they wanted to be saved. Right. It's the same for us today. Uh -huh. Like Rahab, right. there is only one house we can be saved in. And it belongs to Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Like Noah had to be in the one heart, we have to be in the one church. Yeah. That's right. And like the children of Israel only have one way to go to be saved. There's only one way for us to go to be saved. Yeah. And I'll get to that at the end of my lesson. <laughs> one house, one savior, yes. one way to be saved. Right. Mm -hmm. Now I know you're probably saying, well, Brother Harris, you know, there's a lot of churches out there claiming to be Christ's church. Uh, how do I know which one is the right one? Yeah. Right. Well, I don't have time to get into uh, all the identifying marks of the church right now. I'm going to let, let one of the brothers do that so I can keep my lesson short for you. <laughs> but how about we just deal with the name for right now? Let's make right. sure that at least we understand the name and who the church, is, yeah. the church belongs to. We know, or we should know, that the church belongs to Jesus Christ. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It should take on, the church should take on his name, and we as Christians should take on his personality or his character. Uh, right. Now, I can go to Romans chapter 16, verse 16, where it says, salute one another with the holy kids, the churches of Christ salute you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But people get hung up on the word churches. Uh, they think it means all the different church organizations worldwide. Instead of one church that's all over the world, yeah. you know, Ephesians 4 and 5 still says one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Yeah, that's right. You would think that would be the end of the argument. But, you know, I, I think it's funny how, you know, you hear different denominations saying we're all one big church, but we don't all believe the same thing. Right, right. And the difference starts with the name of the church. You know, you got uh, Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church, First a and &E, a &E, uh, Community Church, uh, Our Lady of the Valley, and you can't find not a single one of those in the scriptures. Yeah. So let's see if we can find the name of the church that we should be looking for. And we can eliminate a few names and, and, and Take a look to see what makes sense. Now, we know those that I mentioned before. We can eliminate those. Mm -hmm. We know that, uh, that, the, that, that the church belongs to Jesus because he says, my church. Yeah. Right. Not churches, but my church. Yeah. And I'm going to get to that in a minute. But let me give you an example. And just stay with me because I'm going to prove my point in a second here. Now, if I tell you to come to my house, I'm fixing some ribs. Yeah. <laughs> and you show up at Brother Miller's house, you at the wrong house. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If I tell you to come to my house and bring some ribs with you, and I'm gonna fix it for you, and you show up at Brother Stevenson's house and you don't have no ribs, not only are you in the wrong place, yeah. but you didn't do what I told you to do. Right. Right. Now turn over to, uh, uh, Matthew chapter 16, and we're going we're gonna to look at these scriptures for just a minute. We're going to find out the one that Jesus built. Okay, go ahead and read it. 
When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked the disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Mm -hmm. And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon of Jonah, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, for my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, right. and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Right. Okay, so when Jesus makes his statement in verse 17, mm -hmm. that eliminates anybody who wants to be Baptist or somebody who may be following the prophets, like Prophet Muhammad, that eliminates those right there. Yes. If we don't go any further, that eliminates them. Mm -hmm. right. Now, I want, you to, I want you to pay close attention to where I'm going with this. Verse 16, Peter says, Thou art the Christ. Yeah. Keep your finger on that. Thou art the Christ. And in verse 17, uh, uh, verse uh, 18, Jesus says, my church. Mm -hmm. So we got Christ and we got my church. Right. Now I want you to hold on to that. Turn over to Acts chapter 16. Right. And we're going to look at verses 14 and 15. Now remember, we're holding on to Christ and my church. <coughs> we got a name and we got my church. Go ahead and read. And a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple of the city of Thyatira, which worshiped God, heard us, whose heart the Lord opened, and she attended unto the things which were spoken of Paul. And when she was baptized and her household, she besought us, saying, If ye have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come into my house and abide there. And she constrained us. Okay. So Lydia says, come into my house. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, my church. All right. All right. So now we got my church and we got my house. All right. Lydia said, my house. Mm -hmm. Drop down to verse 40 and let's yeah. read it down. And they went out of the prison and entered into the house of Lydia. Okay, you yeah. can stop right there. <laughs> into where? Into the house of Lydia. Entered into the house of Lydia. Mm -hmm. Now, in, 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 we just read the scripture where Lydia said, my house. Mm -hmm. This scripture says what? The house of Lydia. Yeah, yeah. So if Jesus says, my church, yeah. and Peter says, Christ, thou art the Christ, don't it make sense that if my house is the house of Lydia, then my church will be the church of Christ? All right. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> So that eliminates everything else that's in there. Yeah. So even if if, it, if, this, if you have problems with the churches, plural, in, in, in Romans 16 and 16, this ought to clear that up as well. The, the fact that he said, my church should clear that up. But now you know the name of the church. Why we carry the name Church of Christ? Because it belongs to Christ. Yes. You build one church, yes. he's coming back for one church. Right, right, right. Yeah. In Acts uh, 11 26, it says the disciples were first called Christians at Antioch. Yeah, so there's nowhere where I can read in the scripture where they were called Mormon second or Baptist second or, or, or any place where I can read where they were called Baptists or Mormons or, or Catholics or anything like that. Right. Mm -hmm. We should be one to be called Christians because yes. we are Christ's life. Yes. You should carry the name of the person or, 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 or Christ because he's coming back for his church. Mm -hmm. He's not coming back for the for the Mormon. He's coming back for this church. Okay. So I don't want to be known as a Mormon. I want to be known as a Catholic. I want to be known as a Christian. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, hopefully uh, I've made my point about the man. Mm -hmm. But you need to stay tuned for the rest of the identifying marks of the church, as I said. You know, I just wanted to touch a little bit on that to make sure that, you know, we got you in the right spot. So once you get in the right spot, and hopefully down the line, you'll make sure that not only that you, you got the name right, but that you got the service right, the, yeah. you know, the, the worship of the service right. 
So that's my lesson for tonight, the power and importance of one. Yeah. Yeah. The one that you need to be in. Right. And I hope that you've been able to get something from this lesson mm -hmm. that will help you with your Christian walk. Right. Now again, I told you, there's only one house you can be saved in. Right. And I told you that I'll let you know the one way that you can be saved. Yeah. Right. And I think you already know where I'm going with this. Yeah. First thing you need to do is you need to hear. Right. Romans 10, 17 says, so that faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Yeah. Well, what is it that you need to hear? You need to hear that Jesus died for your sins. Right. And because of that sacrifice, we have a right to the tree of life. He died, he rose, yeah. he ascended back to heaven, he's now sitting on the right hand of God. Yeah. Right. As you hear that, now that you've heard that, you need to believe that. Right. Hebrews 11 and 6 says, but without faith it is impossible to please him. Yes. He right. that comes to God must believe that he is. And that is a reward of them that they didn't receive. Yeah, and once you believe, you need to repent. Which means to, to turn away from the ways that you're doing. Oh. Luke 13 and 3 says, I tell you that except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. Right. Acts 17 and 30 says, and at the time of this ignorance, God weak that. But now commanded all men everywhere to repent. Yeah. And once you repent, you need to confess. You right. need to confess that Jesus is the Son of God. Right. Matthew 10, 32 says, Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess before my Father, which is in heaven. Amen. Yes. And once you do that, you have one last thing to do. Yeah. And that is to be baptized. Right. Acts 2, 38, the Bible says, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sin, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. So if you're not baptized, this is what you need to do in order to be saved, so that you can be in today's ark in order to be saved. Amen. If you've fallen short, now is a good time to come and change your life around so that you can be back in favor with God. You know, a lot of times we, we like to say, you know, life is short. Life isn't short. Life isn't promised. That's what we should be saying instead of saying life is short. Now this past week, my, my roommate from college passed away. And two days later, another good friend of mine was in a serious car accident and she's in critical condition now. You don't want to be caught outside because you've fallen short. So this is the time that you need to come forward if you've yes. fallen short. And if you just need prayer, maybe you got something that's on your heart that you want the congregation to pray for you. Right. Now would be the time to do that. I, all, I say this all the time, and y'all know, y'all should be able to say this with me by now. When Lot Quinny prays for you, things change. Yeah. Things happen. Yeah. So I'm gonna ask y'all,